all right again there is a special edition of one place of voice uh tv um uh, thank you so much for tuning in to one play one voice as usual uh this is where we liberians meet other national around the continent of africa to promote nothing but peace love and unity today we have a special gentleman i mean an awesome liberian i've been following for a very long time and I think, you know, I strongly believe, you know, as a leader, I believe in him. I believe he is a strong man of wisdom. So it kind of encouraged me to invite him into the studio today. So we have uh, Mr. Johnson into the studio. I will give him a chance to kind of like uh, make an introduction. Um, Mr. Johnson, are you there? Can you hear me? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing loud and clear. Are you there? Great. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, can you, um, how's, how's Canada? It's well, I mean, it's winter. I mean, you know what I mean. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Man, you know, I, I wanted to kind of, you know, give the audience some introduction, but you know what? I'm going to reserve that for you, you know. Can you tell the audience who you are, please? Thank you. Thank you. My name is Leo Napolo Johnson. Um, from the beautiful land of Liberia. I live in Canada. Um, I went to post-secondary school here where I did my undergraduate degree. Um, had the chance to live in the Ivory Coast and Ghana through the refugee camps like many other Liberians. Came to Canada in 2006 and um, I've ever since been here trying to push the Liberian agenda through every channel that I can. I'm also the um, founder and executive director of an organization called Empowerment Squared, which is a non-for-profit and charitable organization in Canada. Um, I'm currently doing some projects in Liberia as well. We, we've undertaken a, a $2 million educational facility called the Liberian Learning Center. We broke grounds in October, so we're looking forward to hopefully getting construction started this year. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Johnson, for that wonderful introduction. You know, um, I mean, uh, we are getting a lot of concern as Liberia, you know. I mean, you're really trying, I mean, you're doing a great job you know in canada and uh some of us uh you know as a broadcaster for a very long time you know we took interest in you because you have some um very great message for our people you know that is in the diaspora and uh that of liberia and you're doing a wonderful job but uh let me just ask you the first question uh mr johnson uh what motivates you to do the work you do it's one thing, um, and I tell people this all the time because uh, I usually say Liberians, we, we tend to forget very quickly. What motivates me to do the work that I do um, is, is this. When I fled Liberia on my own those days and ended up in the Ivory Coast and Ghana um, by myself, um, there were people who didn't know me from anywhere, despite the fact that they were also refugees struggling, put themselves on the line for me to survive. I saw people go out of their way to find, to find ways to help. And not just me, but many other young children at the time who could do nothing. And people could have just gone by their way. But those people made the ultimate sacrifice, even when they themselves did not have. Now, I come to Canada with so much abundance, um, despite the fact that we have our own challenges here. But we have so much abundance. And the one thing that crosses my mind every day, what can I do to not just better off my family? Because if those people who helped me along the way were only concerned about their family, I don't know if I would have been alive by now. So I wake up every day and look around me, so much abundance, and I say to myself, what can I do, even if it is to help one person in Liberia, even if it is to help one person in a difficult situation, sometimes not even in Liberia, even here, I would do it. Because you know why? I learned one thing, that our survival, our ability to survive and our ability to succeed in life greatly depends on how well the people around us do. such a wonderful man who have heart you know for his country who travel to the great united states you know um not only traveling you know for he and his family passing through refugee you know uh coming to america and making such a great impact in his country of origin liberia specifically um it, it, it's so interesting but before i even go into our national issue in liberia that is specifically in west africa uh, I would like to ask you this question. How was your experience as a refugee? And how did you transition coming to Canada? Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, I know this is a common story for many, many, many Liberians. <laughs> if you talk to the average Liberian, they can tell you what our experience is, but I will be specific with mine. Um, I completed my high school in, in Danane at, at the St. James School, which was pre predominantly um, operated by Liberian refugees as well. Um, and I will tell you what happened to me on the, on the refugee camp. I, I quickly realized on a refugee camp that as a country, we have, we have an entire generation that is traumatized an entire generation. Because I say this to you, what most people don't realize is that for some of us, we know very little about what Liberia was before the war. A lot of our actual lives as adults or as young adults became real when the war started. So what has become our normal times? When you fight more than two decades of war, that's normal times now. So we accept that crisis is our normal times. We've come to accept that the hustle, the bustle, we've come to accept that you cannot plan for 10 years in advance because you don't know what may happen. So on the camp, we live for every day. You wake up in the morning and you have to worry only about what you get for today, what you eat for today. There was no worry about what happens in six months because the truth is you were not guaranteed that you will be alive six months or you were not guaranteed that you will be in the same camp for the next six months. So the camp has left an indelible mark on us as a people that we need to be very conscious about in undoing because what most Liberians don't realize is as we've come here, to North America or to Europe or wherever we may be, we still haven't realized that we are still living like we were living on the camps. We are still living like we were living in Liberia, where it's all about what you get today. It's all about the short term. It's all about the next six months because our community hasn't gotten to a place to sit down and think about what do we do in 10 years? What will we look like in 20 years? What do we need to do now? So if you ask me my experience on the camp, the one thing it did, it taught me resilience. It taught me the ability to survive. But I've also learned that I don't just need to survive. I need to try and live and take advantage of the opportunities around me. Wow. This is very inspiring, you know, uh, this morning. Again, uh, audience, you are tuned with one place, one voice. Uh, that was the voice of uh, Leo uh, Likpili Nupulu Johnson, you know, a man who have uh, the inspiration, a man who, who is so motivated to go back to make impact uh, in his country, Liberia, in West Africa. Um, Mr. Johnson, I know you got an organization. Before we even uh, transition to the national issue, um, I just want to ask you this question. Uh, uh, when you went back home in Liberia, how did your people receive you in terms of uh, what you wanted to do for them? Thank you. You know, there's a saying that um, you go to East Africa for the safari, for the animals, and for the wildlife, but you go to West Africa for the people. Um, I'll say this to you. When I went back to Liberia, I was overwhelmed. Um, there is one thing I would tell everybody. I was well received by my people. Um, people in Liberia, I, I think sometimes we underestimate what they've gone through. And sometimes we set all kinds of um, unrealistic expectations. I told someone the last time, if you and myself did not leave Liberia to come here and experience what we've experienced and get exposed to what we've gotten exposed to, we will be no different from the people in Liberia. We will be no different from how the people think. I went to Liberia, I'll be honest with you, since we started this project, everybody has chipped in from, uh, people say it's impossible to do things in Liberia. I will be honest with you, my experience has been different. In fact, we've, we've transitioned through two different governments, both at the city level in Pinsville and at the national level. And what it, it, it came to getting the land, when it came to the logistics, I didn't go to Liberia by myself. I took a bunch of uh, friends and donors to Liberia, including our library, the CEO of our library from Canada here, including some other guests that came with me. And while we were in Liberia, everybody went out of their way to try and make things happen. The city of Pinesville, Pinesville City Corporation, did everything they could do, left no stone unturned. Everybody that was involved. So I want to be honest with you. If there's anything I took from Liberia, I was there in October, just this gone October. I took from Liberia that despite the fact that people would try to hustle and survive, they never relent in trying to give their best support. All we need to do is to set the rest, the right expectations and find the right way to work with them. Wow. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, for that, you know, um, inspiring information, you know. Oh, and I forgot to mention to you, Go ahead. recently I actually got elected also as the president for the Liberian Association of Canada, which is the umbrella association, the equivalent of ULA in the United States in, in Canada here. Wow. 
man, you know, uh, myself, we here, you know, I'm kind of really, really inspired by your message, you know. Uh, so, um, I mean, what did it take to, before even, you know, come back to our homeland, you know, Liberia, uh, what did it take for you to win that election, you know, being a Lib uh, the president for the Liberia Association in Canada? You know, our, our community is, is very difficult to, to actually lead um, because of all of the things we've been through and sometimes because of all of the things we tend to bring us as, 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 as challenges. But I'll be honest with you, it was overwhelming. Um, my opponent um, that I ran against, I won 87% of the vote. Um, so there's, I mean, I must be honest, that kind of mandate you don't get all the time. The community in Canada overwhelmingly gave me their support. I won 87% of the vote. And even my opponent who I ran against was so gracious. He's been great in working with me to try and make sure we move the community forward, even though he did not win the elections. The community in Canada has been overwhelmingly supportive. We just held our installation because the election was in July. I won the election in July. So December 21st was our installation. And people from across this country, from Canada, flew everywhere into the city where I live, where the event was held. We had over 300 guests in the room and we raised over 8,000 dollars in one night for some of the projects that we're looking at taking on as a community in Canada. So I want to send this message to the community in Canada. I've been grateful and humbled by the level of support and the level of togetherness that they have fostered that today we are where we are. We are a new organization. We just started in 2015. So we are brand new. I just got elected, I think, five months ago. But I can tell you what I've seen, the community in Canada is set up nicely to do well and thrive. Awesome. This is awesome. It is awesome, you know. And we want to give you many thanks, you know, for doing what you continue to do, you know, for your Liberians and also trying to make an impact in Liberia. Now, let's transition back to uh, the motherland, Liberia. Um, we, we, you know, our people, a lot of people are on social media, uh, in the diaspora and other places in the world, complaining that uh, uh, the people are struggling in Liberia. Um, Mr. Johnson, um, from your wisdom, uh, how, how do you visualize Liberia at its current situation? Here's what I, I would say, and I've said this over and over, and sometimes it's proven controversial. People have disagreed with me. Liberians, overwhelmingly, we focused our effort and all of our energy on our governments. And I'm saying on our governments because including previous one. Um, and here's my attitude. I've said to people, we cannot keep doing the same thing over and over and expect a different result. Some people call it a definition of insanity. Now, that's not to say governments as a whole don't have their responsibilities and what they're supposed to do. In fact, a lot of the things that happens in the country depends on how the government position itself. However, to him or her who much is given, much is required. Here's what we haven't done. We've gone all out to do everything we can to hold our governments accountable, but we haven't held ourselves accountable as citizens of Liberia. I keep asking us this, where is our role? Where is our responsibility? Because you know what? I can give you examples of countries where there have been bad governance, but that has not stopped the citizens from finding a way of doing their patriotic duty. And your patriotic duty is to be devoted to your country regardless of which government is in power. And that devotion cannot exclusively be only chastising and criticizing the government for not doing its part or not playing its role. Let's, let's come to the issue of corruption, which has been one of the biggest reasons for our, our suffering in, in Liberia, which has been the, one of the biggest reasons why our country has not gotten to where it's gotten. Corruption is not limited to the government. The government has done its part in terms of being part of corruption in a big way. But let me ask this to you, my brother. Why are we not outraged that teachers in our classroom are sleeping with young children in grade six to give them grace to pass? Let me ask you this. Why are we not outraged that there are Liberian brothers and sisters on the ground who, despite all the challenges, have found a way to make positive contributions to Liberia? I just I was on live the other day and I named some of them. Mahmoud Johnson from J-Palm, Eric Wawa from Change Agent Network, Brenda Brewer Moore from Keep. I can continue to name them. We've given these people no airtime. In fact, all we've done is we focus all of our energy just on finding all of the problems in Liberia and not finding solutions. I will say this to you. Why we chastise government, why we hold government responsible, we too need to be held accountable. And as Liberians, we need to start asking ourselves, what is your role, the role that you are playing in Liberia? Is it contributing? Is it a balance between your contribution and your criticism? 
Or is it 99% of the time your complaints about all of the things that are not going right? Because the things that are going right, there are many things going right. And I will expect that Liberians in the diaspora will begin to also contribute to the things that are going right while we take on the things that are not going right. Wow. Thank you so much, Mr. Jones. You know, that was a very... Um powerful response to the question just asked now um we we are hearing that uh you know uh there's going to be uh, a peaceful assembly uh in liberia um there's a controversy you know going on in liberia why uh at this time uh the international coming in to uh, kind of have intervention so um uh like uh the leader for the cop you know henry p costa uh, he said uh he don't believe that uh people should detect us in our country on what to do when it come to you know trying to assemble peacefully you know to protest uh, what do you take of that let me say this um first of all let me make this unequivocally clear uh, i've in all of this noise i've been going on i've chosen the side of liberia i'm not on anybody's side i've chosen liberia's side because i think what has happened in all of the noise that's been going on people have forgotten that liberia has a side and the side of liberia that i've chosen is the children of liberia who have suffered so long they have suffered Nothing they've done or nothing anybody can do makes them to make them to deserve the kind of suffering that the children of Liberia have gone through. And for us to be having conversations in 2019 or 2020 and still not thinking about them, still not considering what impact our actions have on them, it's disappointing. Well, let me come to the issue of the international community. Let me remind people in Liberia. You know, we love to, to come out with this uh, of, of attitude of, oh, we are a sovereign nation. Which, are you sovereign? Let's be practical. How can you be sovereign when you cannot fund your own budget? We're just in the process of entering an IMF program because the country Liberia itself is not able to fund its own budget to pay salaries. Hmm. Let's get it to the very basic stuff. We cannot pay our workers as a country. Let's get it to the very basic stuff. We cannot take care of our hospitals. We cannot keep our schools open properly. There's nothing we are able to do for ourselves. So how can you make the argument that you are sovereign when you are just on your way to an IMF program? We do not have sovereignty. And the reason we do not have sovereignty is because of our own recklessness, of our own corruption, and not only the government. I'm saying us collectively, because even the citizens of Liberia, remember when Ellen Johnson Sirleaf was president, the people who were out of power were the advocates of the day against corruption and all the bad attitudes. George Weah became president. All of the people who are the advocates today are the people defending corruption and defending bad attitudes while the Ellen people who are no longer in power now, they are the new set of advocates. We can't keep going back and forth. So I will say this to you today. Liberia needs to regain its sovereignty. And we can only regain that by getting to a place where we can be responsible for paying our own people, where we can be responsible for not borrowing from everybody else, but being able to create, event, and innovate our own. Then you can talk about sovereignty. Until then, the people who control your purse, detect to you. That's how it works in international politics. So, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, so um, do you think there is an equilibrium uh, in the country uh, when it comes to how the economy is, uh, is right now? No, there isn't. And I can promise you this, the economy is not going to get better. Look, let me, let me say this to people. I, I'm not against protests overall. Protests in a sense of I'm not against it. There is a place for a protest. But here's what I ask people all the time. When you go to protest, right? At some point, you will leave the streets. Here's my challenge. When you leave the streets, then what? What we haven't done in Liberia, we haven't mobilized the resources. We haven't mobilized the energy. We haven't mobilized the sincerity and the honesty to say the protest is just one aspect. The things we need to take on is long term. Where is the outrage? Let me ask you this question. Where is the outrage at people parading in Liberia, calling themselves pastors, abusing our country? misleading people where is the outrage when young girls are getting raped every night and they are dying from rape where is the outrage when we have young little girls prostituting the streets of monrovia because they cannot find food to eat every day where is the outrage when we have young brothers and sisters going in the trenches to do everything they can do to support our country where is the outrage the outrage cannot be only when we take up arms against government the outrage cannot be only when it's about time to go and show up because we can put let me be honest with you liberia is not going to change because our government changed 
If Jesus Christ come to Liberia today and be president for Liberia in the current conditions, he will struggle because we are producing people who are corrupt. The entire society is producing more corrupt people. The children who are going to school today under these circumstances, ask yourself, what kind of citizens will they become tomorrow? Ask yourself. And that it's not foreigners that are coming from outside the country to be ministers and presidents and legislators. It's Liberians. Well, our country is producing way more bad people than good people. So as a result of that, our chances of, you can get the best president. If majority of our people believe the only way to succeed is to steal and to be corrupt, good luck firing everybody in the country is not possible. So let's go back to the fundamentals, which is the family unit. Let's start asking ourselves, how am I, how am I raising my, my son or my daughter? Let's stop having children by our Liberian women and walking away as fathers without realizing that we have a responsibility to take care of those children. Let our mothers stop neglecting their children because they want to live a high class life. Let them start to teach. Let our children grow up knowing that there is a dad and mom in the home and how society is supposed to work let our teachers start setting the examples you don't need government to do that it takes ourselves but uh, uh mr johnson uh, I, i'm kind of like trying a little bit a uh, little bit being confused um so are you telling me that a uh, government don't have a role to play in this because um if the economy is hard from what i'm seeing because myself i was in liberia august of 2019 and I, I and i'm seeing the impact also from the government and i understand your point you know your, your point is well taken but i'm um, i'm a little bit confused you know as a broadcaster um so um uh, government uh, do, uh, do you think that when they start to push in programs that will help uh the same parents that you're referring to um to 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 to, to train their children you know uh, from the home uh, do you think um, government don't have that, 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 that important role to play, uh, you know, to reinforce the parents to do that? So here is the thing. I think we've misunderstood the role of government in Liberia. And I'm not here telling you the government of Liberia is fulfilling its role either. No. It's clear, not just this government. Multiple governments since 1847 have not been able to fulfill their responsibilities. To, to the, In fact, many times what they've done is they've abused and destroyed the country even more. Let me tell you this. Government has a role to, pr to protect the peace and security, to provide an environment that's conducive for people to thrive. I agree with you 100%. And in Liberia, we are yet to see that happen. So yes, the criticism government is getting is justified. But let me ask you this. My question to people is, if government refuses to play its role, government neglects its role, so should we all perish? Should we all sit down and say, because the government has refused to play its role, so we should perish? Or should we be finding other avenues while we chastise our government, hold our government accountable? So let me ask you this. Should the fathers that are having children by mothers and walking away, not because they are poor, but walking away because they don't think that were the right woman that they were with, so they neglect the children and the mother, should they be waiting for government to come and tell them what they're supposed to do before? So let me ask you this. The young little girl that's prostituting down the street in Monrovia because she does not have food. Why a handful of our people have 95% of the wealth individually? Should we wait for government? So my question to Liberians is, government is failing and has been failing for a long time. So should we all sit down and wait for government? Or should we all be finding other avenues why we, we, we chastise our government to do what is right? What Liberians haven't done we haven't played our role as citizens. As a citizen, you have a responsibility to your country, especially Liberians in the diaspora and some Liberians at home. So all I'm saying to Liberians is, play your role as a citizen regardless of how bad your government is, right? I'm not saying don't chastise your government. No, we should. But all I'm saying to you is, the government doesn't have anywhere to recruit from where we get good people. Let me be honest with you, my brother. If the government of Liberia came today, right, and resigned, the president and everybody resigned today. Let me ask you, name me 10 people or 20 people you know in Liberia that you can put your head on the chopping board within the leadership or political diaspora. You can say, these are the heroes that we will immediately pick without scratching our head. Our country is bankrupt of, of, of moral people. Our country is bankrupt of people who are sincere and honest. So my problem is, if you wipe out this government tomorrow, who are you going to replace them with? Let's be honest. That was a great response, you know, um, to that question. Uh, so um, let's let, let's transition a little bit uh, before we end the broadcast. Um, so we, we we now see that we are in a stage uh, where uh, 
uh, Liberia, you know, is heading off for a peaceful protest. But then we also see ECOWAS and other uh, international community playing a role now that, uh, according to information that I got from Liberia in West Africa, um, they are trying to speak to the government at the same time. They're trying to speak um, to the head of the uh, of the protest, the COP, uh, Heron P. Costa specifically. Uh, now, Heron P. is, you know, arguing. Is it okay? Now I understand that you are discussing with the government, the council of churches, and that we should have the protest on the fourth of, uh, uh, of of January, uh, which is tomorrow. But Herod Costa is saying no. We, uh, we cannot allow international community to tell us what to do. So we are indeed going to have the protest on the sixth, which is on Monday. Now, what what, what is your advice towards that? I'll tell you this. I think all kinds of people are making all kinds of mistakes. It's become almost like a, ch a child's play. Let me be frank. Let me state this unequivocally. Liberians should be allowed to protest and give their voices, their dissatisfaction to their government any day, anywhere, any place. At the same time, Liberians should realize that they are responsible for maintaining the peace. That is the reason why I think this issue has been wrongly handled from the beginning. The government of Liberia, when Henry Costa or the COP and their group decided they wanted to protest, I believe the government of Liberia should have helped facilitate it. The government of Liberia should have controlled the atmosphere to make sure that, yes, even if 10 Liberians, my brother, decided they want to gather and protest and submit a petition to their government, the government should facilitate that. It is the government's responsibility. And the government of Liberia, look, if I was president, we are. I'm not president, but if I were president, we are. And People in my country say they want protest, regardless of who they are led by. Here is the mistakes that we, we, we make. We forget that it is not about the individuals that are leading these things. It's about the frustration and the satisfaction of the people with their government. I was, if I was president, we had that first protest that was held June 7. The government, I would have controlled it. We would have facilitated it. In fact, that day, we would have designated the spot on the Capitol grounds and make sure we cordon it off where the protesters should be to present their petition. I would have come down as president to my people and say, you know what? I am your president too. As much as you, you disagree with me, as much as you don't, you, you feel the brunt of the suffering. President Weir himself has admitted that things are, are hard in the country. I would have come down to my people, make sure my security had a better control of the security situation. I would have come down as president. I would have received that protest and told them, say, I've received your protest. Some of the things that are in here, we may not be able to do overnight because it's not practical or we have challenges. But here's what I will tell you. I will take your voice seriously. What you said to me is going to be at the back of my head whenever I'm making decisions for this country. President, we should have done that. Because the people of Liberia, regardless of which side of the political aisle they are on, they deserve to be heard. They deserve to have the audience, an audience with their president if they so wish and desire. The second thing I will say to the international community, they've made this stuff child's play. Why is, is the international community trying to stop protests? I think the international community should have come in and said to Mr. Costa and his group, here are the things you will be held responsible for. And here are the things we expect you to, to put in place and what you should do in terms of making sure your protest is peaceful and does not disrupt the peace. Go to the government and say, government, you have a responsibility to protect the rights of your people. You have a responsibility to make sure they can protest and give you their grievances. So here is what you need to do to ensure that that is orderly and ECOWAS will support you with the logistics, with the finances, to make sure all of this is done peacefully so Liberians can come out and make their voices heard. And now what's happening is, ECOWAS should have talked to, to Costa and his group that you are not allowed to ratchet up the tension and be making incendiary remarks. If you want to protest, please come out and protest, but do not incite people in ways that will escalate into violent behaviors, especially in a fragile country like Liberia. So. Everybody has neglected their role and they've made it their primary objective to try and stop protests. Let me give you one lesson in history, bro. Every time you try to suppress these things, you ratchet it up more. There's something innate about human beings. The moment you try to stop us, it's like that's when you start to motivate us. But the moment you try to let us know that, oh no, if what you're doing is right, I'm prepared to help you make sure you do it right. I'm prepared to make sure, you know, whatever you do serves the best interest of our country and everybody, even if I disagree with it. But this arrogant attitude from everybody that people think they can just come and issue press conferences and stop a protest or go ahead and do a protest and everything is in chaos right now instead of us discussing, facilitating the protest to hear the voices of our brothers and sisters. That is, regardless of what you think of Henry Costa, 
regardless of how bad of a person you think he is or not. I really personally do not care. He is a Liberian. If he decides to organize a protest with thousands of Liberians to get their voices heard, I expect that our government will find the resources and work with our partners to facilitate that so that it's done properly in the confines of the Constitution. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Johnson. That was the voice of Johnson, the, uh, the president of, of Canada for the Liberian Association, and also the man who have an organization making an impact in Liberia. That was his voice. But again, we have a one more question before we close this broadcast. Uh, but before that, uh, we'll take a musical break, and we'll be right back. Right after that musical break, we will be trying to uh, ask our guest uh, the last question, at which time we will be uh, closing the broadcast. So again, Stay tuned, we will be right back. Réveillons nos consciences Mes chers Guinéens Chers Guinéens, aux Guinéens, nous donnons nous la main Afin de faire avancer notre cher pays, la Guinée Si seulement nous essayons tous de travailler ensemble Nous ferons bien de la Guinée la meilleure des nations Oh yeah Chers Guinéens, aux Guinéens, nous donnons nous la main Afin de faire avancer notre cher pays, la Guinée Si seulement nous essayons tous de travailler ensemble Nous ferons bien de la Guinée la meilleure des nations Oh yeah Ce que tu fais de valeur aujourd'hui Oh yeah Inspire les actions des autres dans le futur Oh yeah Ce que tu fais de valeur aujourd'hui Oh yeah Inspire les actions des autres dans le futur Oh yeah Ensemble nous pouvons Ensemble nous pouvons Ensemble nous pouvons Guinéens aux Guinéens, nous donnons nous la main Afin de faire avancer notre cher pays, la Guinée Si seulement nous essayons tous de travailler ensemble Nous ferons bien de la Guinée la meilleure des nations Oh yeah C'est vrai qu'il y a... So again, you are talking in one play, one voice. Uh, there is where Liberia and other nationalities around the continent of Africa to promote nothing but peace, love, and unity. Bringing back our African tradition to the USA. Let's unite this our African connection. Um, today we have a uh, awesome guest in the studio. Um, his name is uh, Mr. Johnson, Leo Johnson. Uh, you know, we we asking a series of questions. Uh, I think you heard a lot. Uh, but to conclude the broadcast, uh, we will be asking uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, where do you see Liberia? four years from now because of based on the current situation where do you see Liberia how can you predict because I know uh, this broadcast is going to live until that time thank you let me say this to people I'm hopeful and here's why I'm hopeful I've learned one thing in history that most of the time it doesn't get better until it gets really worse our country unfortunately is, is, is going down the wrong trend and I will say this to you what that is doing for it is it is awakening us and let me tell you what I'm hopeful. It doesn't take the majority of people um, based on history to change the trajectory of a nation. It's always taking a handful of committed, dedicated, and honest people to stay the course. You've known me for a long time. I used to avoid being on Facebook Live, even taking up interviews. I never used to want to do it because Liberians, most of us who say we are good people, stay away because we are afraid of our name. And you know, people attacking us and castigating us. But let me say this to Liberians. I am not hopeful because... I know that there are still Liberians out there who are willing to make the ultimate sacrifice. And what is the ultimate sacrifice? The ultimate sacrifice, I always say, is for us to learn one thing from the bad people. There's one thing we need to learn from the bad people. And here is it. We need to learn the determination and the guts that bad people have. When bad people decide to do things, my, my brother, nothing stops them. 
You can criticize them. You can challenge them. You can fight them. They go right ahead. I want to encourage those of us on the other side that are working to make things better. Let's not get discouraged. Let's muster the same determination and courage that even when people criticize us, that even when people attack us, that we will not relent as long as our conscience is right. Let me give you an example. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. People only read the glamorous part of his history now. But here's what happened. During Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. days, the black community even went as far as saying Dr. King was so stupid and naive that he could only see black people being freed in his dreams and not in reality. Because they believed at the time that peaceful, nonviolent movement was not enough to set black people free. But today, we all revere Dr. Martin Luther King. I want to encourage Liberians in Liberia. Now, regardless of what you do, let's keep the peace. Regardless of what you do, let's make sure that Whatever we do, our country is first. And let's not wait for the governments because governments will come and go, but our country will outlast any government. We've been innocent since 1847. It's about time for us to try something different. Let's start rallying around a new form of protest. Let's start to rally around people like Mahmoud Johnson, who is succeeding in business in Liberia as a Liberian and hiring hundreds of Liberians. Amin Mudat who's hiring hundreds of Liberians, Brenda Brewer Moore, who took upon herself to start a group to start building reading rooms for our children around, for our children around the country. Marco Weir, who has ran one of the only literacy and reading programs in the country since the war, even when the war was actually, if this is the new form of protest, my people, our protest will be heard louder if we start to rally around. So in the next five years, I see the voices of people like Brenda Brewer Moore, Mahmoud Johnson, um, our, our brother, our, our, our we are. I see people like Eric Wall. I see those voices becoming the dominant voices because those voices have been consistent and they have stayed the course. And when all the dust settles, those are the people that will still be standing for our country. Again, that was the voice of uh, Mr. Johnson. Uh, just uh, before we let him go, uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, for the record, uh, you know, uh, we all are concerned for our country, Liberia. We want to make sure that we see our brothers and sisters, you know, rising up. We want to make sure good come for the country. So um, we, I learned uh, in, on my text uh, that uh, the protests uh, uh, may have been confirmed for Monday. Now, for the record, uh, what is your personal advice to our Excellency George Manawea? During the protest, what do you expect him to do? And that's how we conclude the broadcast. Thank you. Here is my mm. message to President George Weah. I think I will also send this message to the government that by now I will hope that the government is, is discussing and finding possibilities to have a control mechanism of the protest. I think people should be allowed to, but I think the government should issue very clear guidelines, including our international partner as to what is acceptable behavior and what is not. Anything outside of peaceful is unacceptable and it's unconstitutional and our government should make it clear. But our government should also allow our people to trust them again by telling them that, yes, they have the right to have their voices heard. And our government will facilitate that process in a way that it does not disrupt the entire country or it does not create chaos. And to the protesters, I want to send this stern warning for people who may be wanting to use this for their own selfish and greedy aims to incite people. You're making a grave mistake because all you'll be doing, you'll be destroying our country. I will warn our protesters. I will ask that they heed this advice. Let's be peaceful. Come out tomorrow. If you have a petition, you want to hear your voices heard. If you are protesting, I mean, on Monday, come out on Monday. Do it. Embarrass people who said you were violent. Embarrass people who say you are going to disrupt the whole country. Show them that you are better than that. Here is my final word. 1979, an attempt by the government to stop protests led us to over two decades of civil war eventually. Let's learn from that history. Let's not try to stop protests. Let's try to facilitate it so that as a government, we can our government can control it. Our government can ensure that the right things are put in place to avoid chaos. Because when you try to stop these things, everywhere in history is gone wrong. And whether the protester win or the government win, we all lose because the number of lives that are lost, properties destroyed, will be irreparable. We've done too much to destroy our country. We cannot afford one more instability. So my advice to everybody, remain calm, remain peaceful. To our security forces, please exercise the greatest restraint. And if there are people being disruptive, remove them. Don't try to disrupt the entire scene. Be professional. And I trust the security forces. The demonstrator on June 7, their level of professionalism. And I expect no less tomorrow. And I hope our president will be calm also tomorrow. will be calm on Monday, I mean, and exercise the greatest restraint to allow his people vent their frustration. Thank you. Well, that was the voice of um, 
Leo Johnson, uh, the president for the Liberia Association in Canada. Uh, we had to respect you, uh, Mr. Johnson, for the good work you continue to do into our community. Uh, don't think we don't follow you. We see you. Uh, we really observe your work, and we want to encourage you to continue doing your good work. Again, with that said, I want to say thank you so much for being in the seat. Thank you so much, and have a good day. Thank you, sir. Have a good one. All right. Bye-bye. So that's how we end the broadcast uh, today. Uh, again, the One Play, One Voice. Uh, we hope to see you here next time on the broadcast. Thank you so much and have a great night.